what does cyberpunk, apocalyptic fashion, and steampunk and dieselpunk all have in common? And more importantly, can they be translated into a dark aesthetic? My name is Melissa, and in today's video, we are going to be talking about different dark aesthetics that revolve around cyber fashion, apocalyptic fashion, and the influences of steampunk and dieselpunk. A while ago, I did a video talking about if you want to achieve a dark aesthetic, aim for these five fantasy muses, which is vampire, witch, siren, dark fairy, and possessed doll. And what they all have in common is they fall under the three pillars of dark aesthetics. And I have this handy dandy diagram. A lot of these entities or elements that you can incorporate to make your style feel a bit darker or alternative is the idea of incorporating night or darkness, nature elements, and supernatural elements. And as you can see, the five entities fall into these. And although a lot of people resonated with that video and the idea of aiming to dress like a vampire or a dark siren or of course something witchy or of the occult, a lot of people in my comments were asking, where does cyberpunk fit into all this? Where does steampunk fit into all this? So let's deep dive into that. In my diagram, I've noticed when it comes to cyber fashion, apocalyptic fashion, and steampunk slash dieselpunk styles, they all have to do with dark dystopian styles and aesthetics. And a lot of these genres actually stem from sci-fi and high fantasy novels and film. Now, when it comes to the cyber bubble, I don't wanna call this entire bubble cyberpunk because there's different subgenres that fit into this, such as the 1960s space age. Also, retrofuturism, Y2K futurism, and of course, cyberpunk. When it comes to apocalyptic fashion, it's very subversive. It's probably the most rugged and the most informal of the styles. When it comes to steampunk or dieselpunk, there are actually so many punks that fit into this, but I'm calling this bubble steampunk because this was the genre that came first. Although my everyday style probably revolves more around something of the occult and a little bit of corporate goth, I would say in terms of home decor and accessories and different elements here and there, I resonate the most with dark cyber styles. When it comes to a dark cyber style, it focuses on technological advances. And dark cyber styles we actually see today a lot of times. There's lots of chromes, silvery tones, neons. It's very structured, cold textures, and a bit of extraterrestrial influences. Some modern day styles that actually take elements from dark cyber styles is of course cyber goth. Tech wear, which is not exactly a style, but a type of apparel and garment, but a lot of tech wear does fit right at home in dark cyber styles. When it comes to designers, Mugler and Rick Owens are huge influences when it comes to dark cyber fashion. I almost called this section retro futurism, but the most interesting thing to think about now is our idea of what we envision the future to be like is gonna someday be considered retro futurism. So I'm gonna get a little bit more specific and mainly call this overall broadened genre cyber styles or dark cyber styles and talk about the different ways that you can go about this. And the first way is to look to our past and think of 1960s style and what they thought the future would be like. So we have the 1960s space age style. This is for you if you love a mix of mid-century fashion with cyber influences. So you love that juxtaposition of clean cut designs that still feel retro, a bit of touch of humor and whimsy. A lot of these 1960s space age style, I don't know if it was intentional, but there's definitely a bit of fun and humor that goes into this. When it comes to the origins of 1960s space age style, you have to think about what was going on at the time. The 1960s was the space race. Everyone was, which country was going to go to space first? So a lot of movies and media revolved around that. I'm not gonna pronounce his name, but this designer next to the space race section is actually known to have coined the term 1960s space age fashion. So you'll see that in the bottom right image. When it comes to media inspiration, I highly recommend looking into Barbarella. Uh, her styles is some of my favorite styles and I would actually argue could absolutely fit as a dark aesthetic. The Jetsons, uh, parts of the fifth element and Star Trek 
I actually take a lot of inspiration from Vulcans, particularly my eyebrows. Fallout propaganda, not all of Fallout, but more particularly like the styles we see in the Nuka Cola ads. Now, what you're looking for if you want to dress this way is look for 1960s mod silhouettes and incorporate elements of chrome, silver hardware, retro reproduction styles. If you feel like it doesn't feel dark enough, really envision this style as a version of rockabilly, which has a prominent place in dark aesthetics, but think of this through more so a 1960s lens versus the 1950s, which is rockabilly. Incorporate more latex. Latex is a huge fabric element that has to do with this type of style, but if you incorporate more black latex, like we see in the top left image, it will feel inherently dark. And embrace the unsettling. Embrace a little looking alien-like. So 1960s space age fashion is for you if you favor more pinup looks and more traditionally feminine styles. Now, if you want something that feels a bit more modern and a bit more forward and also minimalist, you may wanna go more toward cyberpunk and even take influences of what was going on during Y2K fashion. I feel like cyber Y2K styles or Y2K futurism had they they had they they were onto something. These styles are for you if you love a more modern look. And again, like the space age, they both have clean cut designs. Now, when it comes to the history of cyberpunk, it was inspired by the role playing game from the 1980s. Now, when it comes to cyber Y2K, these styles and these clean cut designs were mainly inspired by the welcoming of the internet and a lot of the technological advances going on in the early 2000s. Now, when it comes to inspiration for media, of course, look to Blade Runner, which is probably the poster child for cyberpunk. I think both iterations of Blade Runner are great style inspirations, whether you like the movie or not. Matrix is a classic video game cyberpunk 2077 cowboy bebop is a bit more rugged version of cyberpunk but still a great influence this is a super underrated movie but i highly recommend looking into the creator if you want to go for more a y2k style which is going to be a bit more whimsical look to tlc music videos or a lot of the music videos going on at the time the movie josie and the pussycats really embodies the silliness of cyber y2k now, although this is not exactly cyber styles, the outfits that they wear in Underworld is still a great inspiration for this. And if you feel like it's not dark enough, increase your leather, latex, and harnesses. Go for chrome accessories in spooky themes. So while you're wearing all of this silvery hardware, maybe look for things that have a bit more spider elements or pumpkin elements, like get really obvious with it or lean into the extraterrestrial side of it. Now let's talk about apocalyptic fashion. We're gonna get a little bit creative with this one. This is definitely the most broad out of the genres I'm going to be talking about. And there are so many influences and movies to look to for this type of style. So if I don't name your favorite movie or a book, please don't take it personally. There is just so much to cover. I had a hard time really narrowing it down which references to pick, so I really picked styles and movies that I felt the most comfortable delving into. When it comes to apocalyptic fashion, it focuses more so on the distress and decay of dystopian visions. This one is going to feel a lot more natural versus the cyber styles, so there's going to be a lot more knitwear, a lot more earthy and natural fibers holes and rips, DIY elements, and really worn in styles. Now when it comes to apocalyptic fashion, some styles to look into if you like this is 90s grunge. It's a very DIY, it's very worn in. Modern subversive fashion, if you want to go for a more runway inspired type of look. Solar punk, which is a brighter, more eco brutalist look instead of steampunk. Brutalist sci-fi movies and avant apocalypse. These styles are going to feel more raw, neutral toned with pops of earthy greens. It is textile driven, fiber driven, and returning back to the past versus cyber is going to be constantly looking to the future. Now for designers, I can list actually several designers, but for this style, I actually look, 
I would actually recommend looking into ways that you can make this more personal. Look to small businesses, look at small crocheters and knitwear companies. Again, there are so many ways to go about an apocalyptic type of style in a dark aesthetic way. So I narrowed it down to these two. We have Avant Apocalypse, which is an actual term. I did not make this up. This is for you if you love the imperfections based off of everything that I just described. You embrace fiber arts, drapery. So unlike the cyber styles, which is a lot more structured and feel more cold, this style is going to feel a lot more flowy. And of course, DIY elements. Now, when it comes to the history of Avant Apocalypse, Rick Owens heavily influenced this movement. And it was also inspired by fantasy and dystopian film and books such as Star Wars. Now, not all of Star Wars. Star Wars has a mix of cyber styles, but the styles that we see on Padme and Rey or the styles we see on Tatooine are very much avant apocalypse or of this apocalyptic type of style that is futuristic. Dune, like Star Wars, it's not all of Dune, but a lot of styles in Dune. Princess Mononoke, I mentioned this in the beginning of my video, but Miyazaki movies tend to really lean into solar punk and apocalyptic type of styles with a brighter look. Game of Thrones, not all of Game of Thrones styles, but more particularly what we see on the Martells and some styles we see in the Hunger Games. What you're looking for if you like this is open knitwear. You want lots of holes. It's going to be very imperfect, long drapey silhouettes. The key word you're looking for is subversive style. You're gonna find a lot of subversive knitwear if you look this term up. Rips and holes, make it yourself, thrift these items and really make it your own. And of course, neutral tones. Now, if this does not feel dark enough, add darker themes to it. Layer and layer and layer. There's just something about heavy layers that already feel alternative and dark and aim to look like the villain, not the hero. This one can actually apply to all the styles I'm talking about in today's video. So instead of looking like you are here to save the world, maybe look like the apocalyptic villain. Okay, so for this one, I didn't know exactly what to call it because I, for this section of the apocalyptic fashion, it's gonna be a lot more rugged, a lot more worn in because the avant apocalypse is kind of like high society in this dystopian future. And this section is a lot more of the everyday, a lot more, it's gonna feel a lot heavier in terms of fabrics and styles. And it incorporates styles of the sci-fi movies and books that I mentioned, but also what would a zombie apocalyptic fashion with high technology look like. So this style, we're calling it apocalyptic punk, which again, I did not coin this term. I've actually heard this and read this uh, being tossed around when referring to movies such as Mad Max and a little bit of The Walking Dead. This is for you if you love imperfections, you prefer rugged yet structured pieces, and of course, DIY elements, which is the common thread between these apocalyptic styles. The history, again, Rick Owens heavily influenced these type of styles, but think of sci-fi, but also horror, film, and books. Media is The Walking Dead, The Last of Us, so pretty much any zombie apocalyptic movie. Mad Max is a great style. Also Dune, again, some parts of Dune, and also just look to any sci-fi horror film. What you're looking for is distressed and worn in leathers. Cargo fabrics, again, a lot heavier, yet still natural styles. And military inspired details mixed in with grunge-like DIY elements. If it does not feel dark enough, make it feel more worn in. Add biker elements. Now, it doesn't have to be exact, but if you're thrifting this on Depop or eBay, literally looking up the term biker, you're gonna find some of these elements in there. And of course, make it darker in the color palette. It's only some of the apocalyptic fashion. Again, you can go so much deeper into that, but then this video will end up being hours upon hours long, and I don't have the bandwidth for that. Moving on to our next 
dystopian dark styles is steampunk versus diesel punk. Now, when it comes to steampunk versus diesel, diesel punk, there's actually a lot of crossover. And if you look it up, what these two actually have in common is that they focus on interwar inspired fashion, military inspired details, but fantastical elements. Steampunk and diesel punk are different from the apocalyptic fashion I talked about because there's something about steampunk and diesel punk where it still feels like it's a bit more fantasy versus the apocalyptic styles I showed feel a little bit more real. Even if we're talking about Star Wars, it still feels a bit more what you would see today. So of course we have steampunk, diesel punk. Some subgenres are deco punk, where there's a bit more art deco elements. Atom punk, which is a bit crossover with the 1960s space age style, fallout style and steel punk. So again, these styles are going to feel more military inspired. Think Sucker Punch. It's going to be a little bit impractical, yet fantasy-like. The designers were thinking Alexander McQueen, Galliano, but look more so to costuming in film and dystopian cosplays. A lot of the steampunk color palettes is these brown leathers, which are still integral to making it still feel a bit steampunk. But let's talk about what is steampunk and how do we make it darker. This style is for you if you love the extravagance of the Victorian era. That key word here is Victorian era because steampunk is Victorian versus diesel punk is the 1900s. Steampunk is going to have corsetry, unconventional elements being paired together, and brown leather. So this term was coined by the author K.W. Jeter in 1987, reimagining of our past with a twist. What you're looking for are brown leather harnesses, Victorian silhouettes, billowy sleeves, luxurious fabrics such as velvets and extravagant patterns. If it doesn't feel dark enough. So when it comes to steampunk, it is a bit, it is alternative in its own right. But if you want it to feel darker, replace the cogs that we normally see in steampunk for skulls and more morbid elements. Look to stripes. Stripes make a huge difference, just like we see in the top left image from Sleepy Hollow. Add a bit more vampiric or vampy elements like we see in Van Helsing. All right, let's talk about diesel punk. So like I mentioned in the steampunk section, diesel punk very similar to steampunk and oftentimes mistaken to be interchangeable for steampunk but diesel punk is actually different. There's a lot of crossover, but the biggest difference is, is the time period influence. This is for you if you love rugged yet elegant silhouettes, 1900s influences versus the Victorian that we see in steampunk and dark neutrals. This term was coined in 2001 by game designer to describe his tabletop role-playing game, Children of the Sun. My favorite movie is one of the greatest inspirations for diesel punk, which is Sucker Punch. We see in the top, the middle and the top left images how military inspired Sucker Punch really was. The City of the Lost Children is also a well-known diesel punk movie. I also saw it being categorized as steampunk, but more so diesel punk. Dark City, which is one of my favorite movies. What you're looking for are military inspired basics, leather harnesses, combat boots, and deep olive tones. If you want this diesel punk aesthetic to feel darker, Sucker Punch is the blueprint. Boots and harnesses really make a difference. If an outfit is not feeling dark enough, combat boots can really make a difference and so can a harness. And mix in punk DIY elements really personalize it and make it your own. If you watch this whole thing, thank you so much. Out of all the styles that I talked about, which one was your favorite? Or do you feel like you resonate more with the nature inspired styles such as the vampiric and witchy styles? Or do you like these more human dystopian dark aesthetics? If you are a Patreon member, everything that you saw is going to be condensed into a little PDF for you to reference. And I cannot thank my Patreon members enough. You are all so sweet and I love having that little community. Um, I hope you have a great week and until next time, bye.